Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. Hey Rifters, Keith and Alan here. Before we start the show, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Yeah, man. The LGF Museum of Natural History is a non-profit, 300,000 square foot upcoming new museum in the Phoenix, Arizona. Larry Jean Fleeman will have worldwide natural history coupled with cutting edge technology that will appeal to all senses. That's right, Alan. They strive to educate children of all ages. Another interesting fact is LGF's founder, Mike Fleeman, is is decating this museum to his late father, Larry Jean Fleeman, for his inspirations and his motivations that were able to start collecting artifacts of natural history. With your support, LGF, Museum of Natural History, home for Larry, their stigma lock, Spinfer, a 67 million euro herbivore from the Cretaceous period. That is pretty cool. It is pretty cool, Alan. So follow them on Facebook at LGF Foundation and visit them at www.lgffoundation.org. I just put 10 bucks in. Excellent, Alan. And you rifters can too. Let's build a museum of the future today by visiting and donating to www.lgffoundation.org lgffoundation.org Now, back to the show. Excellent. How's it going, guys? How's it going? That was a pretty good recording we did. Uh, We just did the Sheena show. You know, that was a blast. You know, we just came off uh, with our neighbor, Sheena Metal, and uh, it was a a blast. And, uh, you know, Sheena was with... uh, Howard Stern for quite some time, and uh, and at the uh, Laugh Factory. Yeah. So uh, she's a real pro. I, I had a fantastic time over there. Oh, it was fun. I didn't. I didn't know. She gave us some great advice about radio uh, podcasting and all that stuff. And uh, basically, she said, "Move closer to the studio." You know, it's funny. Uh, she's so sweet. Uh, she lives. Was it four blocks? Yeah, I think that's what she said. Four. Four blocks, blocks from L.A. Radio. And she loves it. Uh, God, man, you know, that's, you know, we drive uh, little ways. You come in from uh, the OC. OC, and I, I'm coming out of beautiful downtown Inglewood, which is by the Los Angeles airport. But For, we get here, don't we, man? We do, we yeah. do. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, he's calling in, uh, but uh, we have Dan Cummings. Dan on, Cummings, yes. Yeah, on the show. And uh, he's the funny, he, you know, he's one of my favorite comedians. I oh mean, yeah, yeah! I, I love, love him I love so Dan much. Cummings. He's actually doing Irvine at the end of uh, August, and I submitted uh, to the Improv to see if I could open up for him. That'd be great. Yeah, that'll be awesome if I get the job. Yeah, you know, sure. but we'll see because they don't respond to my emails. <laughs> well, Sheena we, said you got to move to L.A. <laughs> you have to move. If you move to L.A., but I live respond like, to your emails. Yeah, but I live like five miles from the Improv. <laughs> Do they respond to your email? No, not no, at all. Fine. So it's it's amazing how like that <laughs> advice kind of flips. <laughs> but uh, for those who don't don't know, uh, Dan Cummins is uh, he was the host of the Playboy Morning Show. I don't know why it says was. I thought that show was still going on. We can ask him. Yeah, but uh, uh, he was on. He did a Comedy Central presents. He was on yeah. Conan. Conan. Uh, he's performing this weekend at Hyenas Comedy Club at Fort Worth, Texas, Thursday through Sunday. You're from Texas. Yes, I am. Not yeah. Fort. Not necessarily. Well, I'm from Fort. I'm I'm from Houston, yeah. which is a little bit different. But uh, Fort Worth is a very nice city. I love Texas. Yeah. And uh, I, I I think it's amazing that uh, uh, he'll be performing there because, um, you know, he's from Idaho. Yeah, and I think it's 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 kind of a cool thing, being from Idaho, growing up in a small town of four hundred people, and going to Fort Worth, to which perform is not at a, at a much larger venue. Than, well, you, but it's still it's like country. Yeah, to me, Idaho is country, and we can ask him. We can. When he comes on. Well, yeah, he's uh, calling in, uh, but I think that Hyenas Comedy Club is a great name for a comedy club. Hyenas like to laugh. Yeah. I think that's a very, uh, 
I think that's a anyways. I think that's a good name. Um, he also is the host of a podcast that just came out maybe four or five months ago called Time Suck with Dan Cummins, and it's actually I listened to. We both listened to it. On we the listened to the JFK one, I and that was, that was cool. Very interesting. I'm into and conspiracies, and, and you know my major is history. I actually, you know, I have a degree in history. Yeah, I, I was. We were like we were like we were like in school. We were in the car. We were like in school and stuff. We were going, yeah, this is like history, man. Yeah. Was that cool or what? Wait, in, in the well, yeah, we because to, because we were, because we were saying podcast. that the podcast was more about is it was more like teaching. Yeah, we thought yeah. that was cool. I thought it was very cool. So while we're waiting for Dan to call, uh, because he couldn't come to the studio because he is performing uh, in Texas, so he's probably in Texas right now, right? In the green room. No, not quite. Thursday. This is Tuesday. Ah. But um, what was I going to say? He's going to be calling in. Oh, yeah. He's going to be calling in. And uh, he's calling in right now. Hello, Dan. Hello, Dan. Hey, how's it going? Is it Keith? Yeah. Hey, Dan. How's it going, pal? Good, man. Thanks oh. for uh, having me on. Thanks for oh, doing thank it. Thank you. Oh, Dan, this is Alan Lee, the trusty sidekick of the show. We, I try to be trusty. Hello, Alan. Glad to meet you, Dan. So, so Dan, oh, where... Man, yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> Dan, where are you right now? Are you in Texas, or...? No, I'm, uh, I'll be in Texas this weekend, but I'm, uh, I'm at home in Idaho right now. Idaho. Here we go. Yeah. Alan had a very interesting thing about Idaho and Texas. Why don't you tell Dan? Well, I was just saying that, you know, he grew okay. up, Dan grew up in Idaho, so we, he would have a, an appreciation of, you know, of like the country, the small town, the, you know, the, the idea of a small town, how people treat each other in a small town. Right. But then there's probably a dark side to that, too, because, you know, like maybe people don't always treat each other really nice in a small town, but I don't know where I'm going with this, Dan, but... I was making some connection between Idaho and Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's definitely like um, you know where I live now is a, a decent sized place of uh, I don't know I think 150 thousand is is like oh, a little me. area here, so it's not like but where I grew up is tiny. Yeah, and yeah, um, right. yeah, like like four or five hundred people. Yeah, that's and, what I was referring to. And in a little town like that, there's definitely like a, a the yeah, the nice part is that everybody. Everybody's kind of friendly because of the social pressure to be friendly, usually. Where it's like, you know, like in L.A., which I, where I lived for a long time, like, yeah. you know, you can flip somebody off on the freeway, <laughs> and, and I used to all the time, in, in road rage moments, and you're never going to see that person again. Like, yeah. it's astronomical odds against seeing that person again. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, so you can kind of do it, like, somewhat risk-free for the most part. You know, they're probably not going to track you down, all that kind of stuff. But in, in a small town where you, you yeah. literally either know everybody or know the same people that everybody else knows, you know, and and you see all the same people every day, you know, you flip somebody off, by the time you get to where you're going, everybody knows the person, you know, there, yeah, that everybody knows, they're going to be like, what what was that about? Like, what were you doing there? Like, you're going to have to face the consequences. So I I think that kind of pressure, you know, know, keeps people being a little bit more polite. They're they're just privately as bad as anybody else. Sort of like a bad episode of Twin Peaks, if you do that too much. (laughs) Right, right, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah. So, well, Dan. Uh, no, a bit, a bit, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, no. I was just going to say I don't even know where I was going with that. It's like a little stuff. It, 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 I, I would not want to live in a town like that small again, though, because you know. Also, I mean, like dating and those kind of things. Trying to meet somebody, you have very, very, very few social options. Yeah. So. Yeah. The the thing about a small town that would suck is like because you do stand up, everyone would know like. Everyone knows you, you know what I mean? Do, do people like say, "Oh, tell me a joke all the time to you?" And you're like, "Uh, like, does it irritate you?" Yeah, you know, I, I actually less now. I think it's funny. Like, um, when I go back home, yeah, everybody there knows that I do this, but uh, yeah, for some reason, it's yeah, it's funny. I, I never get that there. I get that when I meet people just in life. Like, I I try not to tell people. I'm a comic because yeah, yeah as you guys know both you know I've done you know stand up yeah, sure. then you inevitably get the like let's say something funny or tell me a joke and uh, uh, I hate that so much now I yeah. think, like I, it, things always get so uncomfortable uh, usually after that where I'm just because I, cause I will not do that I'm just like no yeah. no that's not how it works and then and then they just think I'm a jerk but in my uh, in my hometown 
Yeah, no, they they just uh, kind of leave me alone about it, actually. Oh, that's cool because like in LA, you could like kind of disguise yourself. You could be like, oh, I I don't do comedy, and they'd be like, oh, okay. But like if everyone knows you, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, small. Right. Yeah. In in LA, I, I worked in production for a little while, and I would just tell people I was a producer, just because <laughs> everybody's a producer in LA. It's you know, and so they would maybe ask what show I worked on or something like that. And the the conversation would quickly go away, but there was no pressure to like be funny or ask questions about how it works. That's so weird that, uh, when you say like you're a producer and stuff, people like act like they're interested for like 20 seconds and then they'll be like, Oh, okay. Here in LA. You know what I mean? But if it's like a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a vague title, you know, like not many people even know what it means. I mean, a lot of people in the industry have a hard time even defining like what a producer is. Yeah. (laughs) So I feel like money. It's just kind of vague enough where people don't really know yeah. what to kind of follow up, you know, with it, mm-hmm. as opposed to stand up where everybody thinks, you know, they're hilarious, yeah, or that they, you know, know somebody who's hilarious. That's my favorite is when you tell somebody uh, you're a comic, and they're like, oh yeah, no, no, my uh, my cousin's a comic too. He <laughs> um he does he did an open mic a couple of years ago in you know uh, Kalamazoo. Yeah. It's like oh no, that's that's not the same as what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you actually you actually do like comedy the cousin does uh workshop comedy or something you know like i get that well and then they, and then they get weird like it's like there's no good place for it to go unless you're one of the top five touring comics in the world because then if you tell them that you do it for a living <laughs> then it goes to this weird place of like why haven't they heard of you yeah and it, what other job do you have as if it's like this weird but it's like, you know, side ho- it has to be a side hobby unless you're absolutely famous. Like, yeah. and what's funny is those people, like, I'll tell them about people like uh, Brian Regan. Yeah. And they're just like, I love huh, Brian Regan. I haven't heard of him. Yeah, that's so surprising because Brian Regan, he's like the funniest guy and he's clean, you know? Yeah, and, and he has a weird career where I'm so, you know, I think he has one of like the best kind of careers. But he has that weird career where he can do a, th- you know, sell a 2,000 tickets. Uh, in, in one market or one you know town, whatever, at a theater. But the day of his show, he can go downtown to that same city, go into a coffee shop, and no one will know who he is. Yeah. Kind of like, like he has this Peters. weird, like he has a cult oh. following, but nobody else knows who yeah. he is. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I know I know, uh, I know who you are because you're one of my favorite comics. I uh, saw you on Conan about... Uh, Nine years ago, I'm I'm actually good. For, <laughs> yeah, cinema, yeah. No, because uh, you were on the one where uh, where Norm Macdonald was on it, and I'm actually good friends. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'm good friends with Norm, and I just I fell in love with your greeting card jokes, and I just I was like, oh my god, that was just it was so smart, you know what I mean? Because I I oh, that's nice. Thanks, I man. think that too, and then like you know your jokes, they're so be- like I when I write jokes, I write jokes, but. Like I have a hard time performing them, but it just seems like you write them and perform them at the same time. Does that make sense? Like it's it's very yeah. You know, I think as I've, I've been doing it longer, I think you know early on it was more from the head. It was more like definite constructed jokes where you where you could see the construction in the joke. Yeah, and I and I, and I feel like the longer I've done it, now it's kind of gone more to stories. But within my stories, mm-hmm. especially the last couple albums, it's um, I, I it took me a long time to figure it out, but now I can I can write how I talk yeah, yeah. Um, voice and, and, and I, like I do a podcast now that's finally kind of starting to take off like we were listening to, to it the, the time suck we were listening to yeah, the JFK yeah. episodes oh, are you referring so, to the which, history uh, one which, which episode the, the, J- the, JFK the JFK assassination one. Oh yeah the big two parter one yeah, well, yeah. you know in, in those just to talk, speaking of like um, writing how you talk I think uh, people are always surprised when I tell them that like I write those out like I just I just write a script for that podcast every week. Really, but really? it comes ac- but it comes across conversational because I can think about how I say things. Like I don't know, it's the same now. Like I, I can write how I would say things on stage. Yeah, that's awesome. I I had a feeling that there was a lot of writing to do because like you you tell like I was telling Alan I was like the fascinating thing about that podcast is you tell every single little fact, and then you'll you'll be like <laughs> then you'll be like. And then Mike, fuck your mother, said this. You know what I mean? I was like, what the? you drop a bomb right in there, right yeah. in the middle of the history, like you know, the World War One. <laughs> I was just cracking up because I thought that was just great. so funny. It's great. That's a great teaching. It's almost like he's teaching history. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You know, it's 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 been fun that way. Where um, 
you know, I'm just making an effort to make the, I mean, they're, they're inherently interesting topics. Great topics. But I feel like a lot of times, like, academic types can take something inherently interesting and actually make it pretty boring. Yeah. Easily. And, um, and so I'm really, like, uh, trying to work on that formula of, you know, making making people excited to learn something new. Like, and, and it seems to be working. Like, it's really been growing lately, and the feedback's been good, and, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's like, uh, it, oh. it's a lot of the things I like about stand-up, you know, working on new material, sure. essentially, but I can be a lot more factual yeah. and, and take longer breaks between the funny, which mm-hmm. you can't do, obviously, on a stand-up stage. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's true. I didn't. I never even thought, of, thought about that, because if you think about it, if you have a podcast, like, you know, this is like the 20th episode of this podcast. But if you think about it, if it's an hour long and just if your material, right. that's like, I don't know, 20 minutes, if you do three of them, that's another hour. And if you memorize that, maybe, you know, you could have three hours of jokes. So I never, that was very interesting. I never thought about that on a podcast. Like, yeah, you know, I, I have a new hour of regular stand up right now that I'm trying to figure out when to record and what to do with it. And I think when I'm done with it, I'm going to go back through all these scripts and try and kind of like do it in a different way this time and build like uh, a different kind of stand-up hour where it's a lot of historical facts and things that I find not only interesting but really funny, like yeah. to be able to riff off of them and just kind of kind of like a one-man show, I guess, but a, but a lot more stand-up-y. You know, still the same stand-up rhythm, just a lot of facts you know, thrown into it. That's fantastic. Yeah, because no one's, no one's done that, it's great. especially with history. I think it's great. And, uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun. I, I just, I, I truly have always liked learning about things, and I, you know, I've always liked comedy too. So it's just, I feel like it's a good blend of what I was kind of, you know, that was my procrastination before when I was working on stand up was just reading about weird stuff yeah. or you know spending way too much time learning about something random, well, and then going back to working on stand up. And now, now I'm doing both. When you when you said that uh, you you do more storytelling now, do you still because you used to name your jokes when you you were doing a joke, you'd be like okay oh, right right you'd be like okay this joke is named you know greeting cards or compulsive liars something like that do you sure st- sure do you still name your no, jokes you, no I haven't done that since the second album only because I I did it a lot on that and then it just felt uh, I started doing it for the next album. And it just felt really contrived, which I'm probably bad that way business-wise about right. comedy where, you know, some guys have made a career out of a gimmick. You know, yeah. I mean, look at, I mean, you know, Gallagher had a lot of good, good content, but we, would he have become as famous yeah. without the water, the fruit smashing? Like yeah, that became yeah, his trademark and what yeah. people remember in life. And I just felt like um, <laughs> the naming thing, it didn't feel genuine anymore. Mm-hmm. I like I felt like I did it for a while, it was fun. But then now I was just doing it because I felt like I was, it was supposed to be my thing, yeah. and so I, yeah, I just kind of stopped. It just I, I just wasn't wasn't feeling it anymore. Oh, it was so funny though because like, oh, I, thanks, man. I, I had fun doing it. Like I'm glad I was able to do it on a couple albums. That was a great yeah, idea. Yeah, because I I see comics sometimes like they'll do like okay, well that joke was named something, but the thing that was special about you was you did it after every single joke. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, yeah, yeah. It's kind of just. Birthing yeah, and children. Yeah, and it was just like, oh, like it was like, oh my god, like now we, because if you think about, it, then you could be like, oh, remember Dan? He was talking about green cards. He named that joke green card, and then you'd remember, you know. So I thought that that I think that's actually a very smart oh. way to get the audience oh, yeah. to memorize to remember. Right. Yeah, story. yeah. No, I mean, yeah, again, I probably probably should have stayed with it, but 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 now I'm just having a lot of fun doing the stories and stuff too just uh i don't know i i, I always liked uh like the artists i like kind of the music always kind of evolved like a I don't know, like a radio head or something yeah where you know their their sound changes as they kind of change as people and i always wanted to kind of be able to do that with comedy and again i don't know if it's the best business plan <laughs> yeah. but i do uh yeah, i'm still making a living at it and uh and I, and I do do enjoy it well it beats writing it on your palm of your hand as i do <laughs> <laughs> but no i i totally understand how like you don't want to be like known for that like type thing because yeah. i i have um i have asperger's syndrome so like a lot of my stand-up comedy is you know i talk about autism and stuff and i don't right. want i don't want to be known as the autistic comedian i want to be known as the comedian who just happens to have autism you know right. what i mean right yeah 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 it's, yeah it's a big it's a big difference and and, and i feel like you know um 
that's a thing where you'll probably just have to play around with, you know, you have maybe an obligatory joke or two referencing it, but you can change those jokes up. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, once you've been doing it a while and you're a, a ways into it, you probably, you know, then it could be a choice, like where you can reference it or not reference it. Yeah. You, you, I always think about like Ellen DeGeneres that way, where it's like, you know, Ellen DeGeneres, you know, you, you knew, well, I guess she came out, you know, a little bit later, but, you know, she was lesbian, but she didn't really, her stand up comedy wasn't lesbian. It was like, yeah, she can reference it, but it's not just that. She's a human being who happens to also be lesbian. Exactly. Yeah. It was I, weird because her I comedy. I feel like a lot of comics fall into that weird trap of like, like, yes, you have this ethnicity or you have this sexual persuasion or whatever, and that's fine. It's part of your life, but it's not all your, it's not your whole life. Yes. Yeah. You yes. know, you can talk about a variety of things. That can just be one of them. Like, you know, it helps you because. Just like I, with you. I'm sure it's like, you know, yeah, you have Asperger's, but it's not like that's your, you know, you're much more than that. That's yeah. one component of your life. Well, basically, like with my comedy, is I, I let the audience know automatically I'm autistic so they could get into my brain on how my jokes work. You know what I mean? And it. Yeah, yeah. That's how I do it. And another thing that I really like about you is you're kind of like a, you're a daredevil comedian. You know, you talk about stuff that's really unique and you know like bears and like you take a joke and you i feel like you could just go on and on with it and i just think that that's i find that really remarkable because i can't write about different subjects like that and same and oh, I could, okay i could tell on your podcast on time suck you know you, like you take that subject and you just drool the jokes out you know i just think that's so fascinating oh thanks yeah no i've <laughs> i've been trying that especially on this last uh kind of version of material that stuff I'm doing live now where I don't know there were certain subjects I wanted to talk about before but really oh. couldn't figure out how to do it in a way that didn't just gratuitously offend people exactly. but it was uh, something I still wanted to talk about and now I kind of like this certain bits where I ease them in you know to a, a subject you know like about religion or something and then by the time it's gotten to a preposterously irreverent place, yeah. That's like they're, all, yeah. they're already laughing. So it's like I kind of like sucker them in <laughs> to a place where they wouldn't go if I started off in that place, if that makes sense. Yeah, and exactly. uh, it's, it's kind of like a fun little challenge. I can't help but say that it sounds like a comic book hero. Dan Cummings, the daredevil of comedy. You can see that, you can see that <laughs> on a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a comic book character. That'd be a, that'd be a good comic book. I'd read it. Yeah. I'd read it. Would you, will you draw it for to, I'd have to have some power, though, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, have yeah, to have, yeah, like, have a power. Like I, I could, Here we go. My words could, you know, literally <laughs> infect your mind there and, you like, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> destroy your brain or something. I like yeah. that. I like that. <laughs> like, uh... Like, you could have someone uh, tell them to quit their job without quitting their job, you know what I mean? Oh, and you're like, Wait. Right, right. And, change and they show up, and they're like, oh, you quit yesterday. And they're like, I did? That Damn. That would change lives. <laughs> change lives big time. Yeah. I think that would be the best superpower, especially if you do it to people you don't like. Now we're getting the evil Dan, the Daredevil. We're just... Well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like. I'm giving you ideas for the sequel. Uh, you're you're doing a hyenas comedy club this weekend and i was telling alan lee that that Mm -hmm. that's an excellent name for a comedy club i think so yeah yeah it is so random i guess you know but i but well i guess random it is not because the hyenas are what known for laughing for for laughing yeah so i don't know i I thought that was (laughs) very unique I i thought it was good like it's better than an improv because then you're like oh hyenas you're like oh it's an animal and that, that is where where is that Dan that, that's in Fort Worth you know there's um, there's three of them but yeah three hyenas there's one in Dallas uh, proper um, and then one in Fort Worth and then one in Plano which is like a suburb so they're, oh. it, yeah it's kind of crazy that I played all three this last year because they're all within 30 miles of each other wow that that's pretty cool yeah, though but, Cause then, like, yeah, they're fun. I, I like the guy that runs them, and they're they're like three night engagements, which is nice. It's like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You, know, you nice. do five shows, and then you get out of there. Yeah. And uh, usually, not a lot of uh, morning media, so you don't have to get up crazy early on the Friday. And yeah, it's it's, uh, it's easy. Yeah. Usually, good good crowds. Um, I'm sure you get the, this question a lot, but this is just in my no- notes here. Uh, it says you were the host of the Playboy Morning Show. I thought that show was still going on. Or... No, they rerun it all the time, but they um, no, they they ended it. 
I had like a two year two year contract ended last year with Playboy, where it used to be a radio show. Uh-huh. Uh, it was on Sirius XM, and then before I took the job, it went to just their their TV platform, right. which they have like a you know like a premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, <laughs> I yeah, guess it would be like X-rated, that was... like not not oh. crazy hardcore, but. Uh, but nudity. Boy, that and sounds like that would be fun. Yeah, that would yeah. be a great job. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was a pretty crazy job. It was just like I hosted it four days a week. Um, I think it, it was from 9 to 10 in the morning, Monday through Thursday, me and a, a co-host, Andrew Lowell, and then we would interview, you know, actors, reality TV stars, musicians, comics. Yeah. Usually have two guests a show and usually have four Playboy models a show and Ooh. it was just like this crazy, almost like a European crazy variety show. Oh, yeah. Nice. And how how is it like writing for a show like that? Like, because I write for a podcast and I have to submit jokes into the podcast and they never get picked up. So I'm wondering, like, oh, that's cr- <laughs> <laughs> um I, I didn't even know that was a thing where people are taking uh, submissions for podcast jokes now. Like, yeah, man, everything everything's evolving. Um, <laughs> you, you know, we had a uh, we had a, a dedicated writer. And then me and the, as a host and then another producer, the three of us would, actually sometimes three or four of us would build the show out each day. And usually just like an outline, maybe a couple hard jokes, but mostly an outline. And, and it was like, I just knew what, knew what kind of segments I had to get to, but I would just wing it, which was crazy because it was a live show. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you just come up with like concepts for that. You don't have to like, really write out we didn't have a teleprompter or anything so you don't really write out you know each and everything yeah it's just kind of arranging an outline essentially but you still get credit as a writer on that though right because yeah you do like technically you get like this writer's credit stuff yeah. it's so weird like the business that way it's like there's some shows that i've written scripts for that i didn't get credited as a writer and that's yeah. another thing i don't know but uh, but that yeah that, that really actually wasn't that much writing uh-huh. I, I did more writing for reality television than i did for Playboy. Oh really? What, what's it like writing for reality television? Like, I, th- I always thought reality television was like in the moment type stuff. It used to be, uh, and maybe some shows occasionally still are. But it, you know, it always comes back down to money on that stuff. And yeah, yeah. you know, years ago with the early reality shows like uh, The Real World and um, uh, I think like The OC and stuff, you know, they would just send a small production crew, a couple camera guys, in a house with you know, whatever people they were filming and they would just leave them there for, for months. You know, they would just yeah. have different shifts and people would work around the clock and just film and film and film. But then you got to edit all that footage. You got to go back and try and figure out like what happened when make your notes, you know, I'm sure as it happens and then construct these kind of episodes out of hundreds of hours of footage. And basically that's like, that's really expensive to do it that way. Oh, and they, I and they figured that. out it was cheaper to hire some writers and have them sit in a room in LA for three or four weeks together and just kind of come up with either outlines for all the activity the people are going to do in an episode. Yeah, that makes sense. Or sometimes, or sometimes you write the actual bites they do when they're speaking straight to camera. And then, and then sometimes you actually kind of give, give them suggested dialogue to help them kind of get the scenes going. Yeah. But it's all that way, that way, that way they can, um, shoot those episodes in two days because they actually know where to go for each scene instead of yeah, you know. hanging out with them for months. Wow, that's that's very... That makes sense, though, if you think about it, because I don't I don't believe yeah, that all, people actually fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, we have some Twitter questions, but before we do, we, uh, we got to give a shout-out for our sponsors. Um, sure. Uh, hey, Rifters, don't forget to give the LGF Museum of Natural History some love. If you can log on to the Facebook and like their f- page at the Facebook.com dash LGF Foundation or visit their website at www.lgffoundation.org. And together, if you donate, we could build a museum of the future today. All right. Uh, so, Dan, we got some Twitter questions, uh, if you don't mind. Oh, cool. Do you like Twitter questions? Oh, let's do them. Yeah, let's do them. Uh, the thing that I don't like about Twitter, and this has nothing to do with the questions, is I never know if they're actually real people. You know what I mean? Oh, right, right, right. Or like, well, I guess if it's a question, it wouldn't just be some bot. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, the, bots, the bots actually kind of form questions and stuff now. 
Sometimes they can, but uh, I mean, because oh, like wow. I, I'd click on the question and like that'd be the only thing they tweeted for the past six months, and you're like, oh, that's weird. That's interesting. I you know? That. Right, right. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't trust people on Twitter nowadays. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um. Okay, okay, I'm ready. All right. So uh, this is from Mister No Nodi O O Seven. Uh, okay. See, and that's another thing. These Twitter names are so. Anyways, they're very creative on those handles. Yeah. I don't know what to call? I call myself Doctor Heckle. Really? Yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty original. I'm just Keith Reza. <laughs> no, I like Doctor Heckle. Like I'm a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mister Nobody O O Seven. Uh, Dan, does the comp- does the compulsive liar Rick ever contact you with more lies? <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, that guy. I never. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't know I do like stand up. I met that guy uh, back in college before I ever started doing stand up. And and actually, I, I I call him Rick in the bit because I didn't think people would believe at the time what he introduced himself to me as. He actually referred to himself as Wolf. Really? Um, he, yeah, he was this guy who would always wear a wolf, like, silk screen T-shirt. He had, like, all these different wolf shirts. And he was always at the same bar called the Bulldog Tavern in Spokane, Washington. And he was the guy who would introduce himself as, um, he's like, hey, man, uh, people call me Wolf. And immediately I would think, I'm like, no, you call you Wolf, and then you tell other people to call you Wolf as well. <laughs> That's actually funny though, because uh, uh, Fred Wolf probably does that. Do you know Fred Wolf? I, d- I don't know Fred Wolf. But I know that name. Oh, uh, he he used to he used to be one of the head writers on SNL, and he he oh okay he, he introduces himself as a wolf all the time. Oh, I, I didn't. Even know so that. maybe That's maybe you were talking to Fred Wolf. Maybe <laughs> this guy didn't come across like a writer. I doubt it. He came, he came across. This is a maniac. Oh, uh, <laughs> but no, compulsive liars. I, I I agree with you. They're they uh they always like to they they lie about everything and they tell more lies because they're scared of the truth. And I think like yeah, it's, a, it's a, yeah, it's a fascinating personality. It really is. Yeah, and like if you think about I, it, I remember. I, I, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say if you think about it, that's actually like the beauty of your comedy too, because like that's something that. I feel everyone can relate to, and then I don't think everyone can relate to like the the t- darker twists of the lies. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's fun to take something. That's my favorite stuff. It is fun to take something that people relate to the basic premise of, but then take it to a place they never expected. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. you know, no. going to <laughs> like take it really far out there. But yeah, that man, that liar. I remember I worked with a lady uh, right after college. And she was a cook at this treatment center I was working at. And she, uh, like, no matter what job you brought up, she just, like, felt compelled to say that she had done that. And she would throw, like, a year with it. Like, oh, yeah, no, I used to uh, work at a, a school for four years. So, or, yeah, no, I drove trucks. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I drove <laughs> a big rig for uh, six years. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah, no, I, I actually did a little accounting. Did accounting for three years. And it was such a weird thing. Like, we actually, before I left that job, we started, like, a log. We would write how many years down on this piece of paper that she had done each job. Wow. <laughs> and we like we figured out that she was at least if she was able to do these things like hundred and forty years old. Like wow. it was just so ridiculous. Wow. Tally. Uh, and I always thought, like, how how does she not understand that if you if you just keep saying those things, pretty soon people are gonna figure out that the math doesn't work out. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Uh compulsive liars <laughs> though, man. <laughs> <laughs> Natural storyteller. Yeah, that's one of the great things about uh, having a uh, autism is like it's really hard for me to lie. You know what I mean? So like, oh uh, okay, so, I didn't think of that angle. Yeah, yeah. So like, whenever like someone like, because sometimes I'll like miss say stuff, and then they'll like try yeah. to backfire it. And I was like, oh no, I actually said the exact same thing. I just said it in a different word. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Compulsive liars will be like, oh no, I never, I never slept with Mark. And then there's a photo of her sleeping with Mark. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, Twitter question number two. This is actually a Facebook question. Uh, Heidi, Burns wants, okay. Heidi Burns wants to know, uh, Dan, what special do you feel you had more artistic freedom in? Crazy with a capital F or don't wake the bear? 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, actually, don't wake the bear because um, that one. Uh, yeah, there was no consideration for network with that one. Like there was considerations for Crazy with a Capital F for you don't want things beeped out for Comedy Central or whatever. But with the Amazon Prime thing, you know, it's like there's no censorship. Oh, that's cool. So no commercial breaks. So I definitely was um, cognizant of not having bits be too long with Crazy with a Capital F. Like you don't want like an eight oh. minute bit. Yeah. But I, but I think I'm done with the bear. I have a bit or two that are like 12, 13 minutes long each. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I think, I think with that one for sure. Oh, that, that's actually very interesting because I didn't think about when you do a special about the commercials and stuff because you're so used to seeing them on Comedy Central, but you forget about the commercials. You forget that time element. So yeah, factory, and yeah. it's not that you like that anymore. That was just kind of like the end of an era. You know, it's like... Even I feel like the Comedy Central ones now, they can run late with less commercials or they can, you know, post, you know, push people online to watch it, you know, commercial free. Yeah. And and other than other than them, all the rest are networks that don't even have commercials. Either Netflix or or HBO or yeah. Amazon or something. So, you know, it's, it's it is better artistically now where you don't have to think about that stuff. They they should give you uh I I know one of your specials made Netflix, but they should give you like a, another Netflix special. You know, I'm I'm working on it. That's what I'm hoping. I mean, I mean, I'm really hoping that that this podcast, which is you know started off like January, a couple thousand subscribers, and now it's over like a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm really hoping I can build that number <laughs> to a big enough number to uh, convince them to give me one because I feel like that's what kind of what the business has become. Yeah. Fantastic. Unless you're unless you're like the new up and comer, if you're established already, they're not looking to like how to build your career really they want to take somebody who has an existing audience that they can define whether it's 200,000 Twitter followers or a million Instagram followers or YouTube videos with several million views each they want some metric yeah. they can look at and be like okay those people that watch this thing they're going to watch our thing so we have built in ratings which I get on a business level so now I'm just like well alright hopefully I can build my 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 numbers up to, uh, to, to help you know, help my case. Yeah, that'd be awesome. If Raise the Roofs ever gets like uh, billions of dollars popular or something, you know, you'll get a lot because we'll just retweet you all the time. We'll just hand them. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got uh, a couple more Twitter questions. Um, this is from Bachelor Fan 2002 XO. Okay. <laughs> like, who's a fan of a Bachelor? born in 2002 anyways big fans and kisses even i know anyways that's what i'm saying these twitter names are just so bizarre um <laughs> yeah who who is the funniest playboy model you ever interviewed Ooh, uh funniest playboy model i ever interviewed man i thought there's there's so many people that we were had on that show you know we we worked with some models and there was a model named Rachel Love. She was an um, uh, uh, Asian American model. Right. I think if you like Google Rachel Love Playboy, she'll come or, or Rachel Love Playboy Morning Show, and she was hilarious. I can't remember how funny she always was on the show, right? Like like on air, but just like off camera, it's a very like really really smart, really funny. And then um, <laughs> trying to think of like unintentionally, we had a. God, these British. Whoa, twins. she's really pretty. Like, I just Googled her. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, you found her. Yeah. She's gorgeous. Oh, and then the how, and then the how twins. Um, if you look at them up, the British twins, uh, dark hair, the how twins, Playboy. They were unintentionally funny. I don't know, unintentionally, maybe intentionally. We, we never could figure out how aware they were of the act they put on, but they were like. Um, <laughs> there would be a segment called like how to like how to build uh, or how to put a puzzle together or how to like you know construct IKEA furniture, and yeah. the comedy would just be in the fact that they just could not accomplish the, the simplest of tasks. Yeah. Wow. I, I just I just googled the How Twins too. They look very familiar, but I don't know if do look on some seen, reality shows. Double, yeah, yeah, maybe reality. You're, you're seeing double here. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm seeing triple. All right, we got we got <laughs> we got two more Twitter questions. If you don't mind, Dan, is it cool? Yeah, man. No, it's great. All right, this one is from 
underscore capital L E capital V owns. <laughs> Such a weird name. <laughs> uh, Dan, when you did the Craig Ferguson show, did you get a good look at the famous snake mug? And if so, was it cool? Wait, what's that? You know what? The that was mug. my first late night years ago, and I didn't get a look at really anything. That was the weirdest experience oh. where I don't think any show does this anymore. But at that time, uh, <laughs> Craig, you you would not do your stand-up set during his show. He would do a full show, you know, without the stand-up. Right. Then he would leave. Like, wow. he would take off and go do whatever he's going to do. And then they would hold the audience over, and they oh, would do, whoa. like, multiple sets sometimes. And then they would just throw them in a random future episode as if you were on that episode. That's and really so, weird. That must be challenging. It was so weird. And the one I did, it's like, I'm already nervous enough doing my first late night yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, I didn't know it was like this. <laughs> and uh, it was Milton Berle. Oh. I want to say Milton Berle. It's like, the guy who's passed away, a guy who was very old, was the guest on the show I actually taped in front of their audience. And so the audience was very old. It was a very geriatric audience. <laughs> and I followed another comic who was better suited to that audience. Wow. So, like, <laughs> Craig leaves this old audience who could care less about whatever stand. They'd already seen the guy they came to see. And then uh, Jim Short, a funny Australian comic, he goes on and murders. And then I went on and just ate it. Like, <laughs> it, was not, oh my. it was not a good Wow, thing. that's a funny story. Uh, wow. But what does the snake mug have to do with anything? What's the snake mug? Uh... I think, I think he, he. I didn't watch his show much, but he did have some weird little mug. He had really weird little gimmicky things. I think it was just something on his desk. Oh, okay. He always had it. Because hardcore fans are. About I don't snake know the mug. story. Yeah, so know. sorry, so I sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, Twitter person, I, I did not get a look at his snake mug. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I left. I left in a cloud of shame. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, that was. I never returned. I think your story is a lot more interesting than a snake mug. I think mug. it's better. Yeah, his story is much more interesting. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw a snake mug. What's your point? Anyways, uh, people on Twitter. Huh? <laughs> All right, uh, last Twitter question. This is uh, from Paul Cathro at C-A-T-H-R-O-P. Dan, when you okay. worked on Duck Dynasty, did you have nightmares about ducks or dudes with long beards? Oh, you know, no, uh, I had nightmares about having to continue to work in reality television. <laughs> uh, I had nightmares of being stuck in that for my career. No, that was a, that was a weird thing. Was it just like, you know, it, it was interesting to work on a show that was so popular. Right. But I, but it wasn't a show that I was interested in watching. Yeah. So, so it was just surreal in that way. Where it's like, I could, I could, that one I always thought was funny when people were like, wait a minute, it's not totally real. And that's the one where I'm like, Seriously, you think that guys who have four aisles of merchandise currently in Walmart, guys who are reported in numerous you know publications to, to already have been millionaires, yeah. are going to still be sitting in an unair conditioned warehouse in Western Row, Louisiana, wow. whittling duck calls. A little misleading. Like, that is the most preposterous <laughs> premise. Like, of course, it's not real. It, it's amazing how big that show is, though, because. Like I don't, I don't find ducks that interesting, but it seems like everyone else. Well, does. They, they didn't really talk about that. It, it was more, you know, what, what, they had a good formula of uh, close knit Christian family. Willie was generally funny. Cy uh, is a gen genuinely funny character, and it was. And I think the um, the unsung heroes of that show were the editors. Oh. There was this one editor, Colin. I can't remember his last name, and another guy that were just really good at building comedy out of the edits. Oh, you know, like cool. taking reaction shots out of context, adding the right music beds underneath. And uh, it's amazing how much that stuff can do. And, and it's the, the style they created for that show. Uh, they should have been paid much, much, much more than they were because they made that show. Yeah, especially since, like, the, a couple years ago they were on U.S. Weekly and stuff like that. Yeah, that, they, they, it was a big deal. Yeah. yeah, it was a big deal. They were huge, man. They were, it was a cultural phenomenon. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Well, Dan, uh, I know we got to go in your time well, and stuff, you, but uh, yeah. uh, what do you, where, yeah, well, can, well, where can the folks find you? 
You know, uh, finally, at, you know, timesuckpodcast.com is uh, where you can Definitely. link to my tour stuff and, uh, and find out about my stand-up stuff. And then, you know, you can watch Don't Wake the Bear on Amazon Prime if uh, you can stream it if you have that. And, uh, yeah, and you can listen to the podcast anywhere. And then Pandora and Spotify have all my albums you can stream for free. And, uh, yeah, I'm easy yeah. to find. I'm easy to find. Uh, and well, if they're in Texas, they can see you down at Hyenas. That's right. They can see me at Hyenas this weekend Three hyenas. in Fort Worth. <laughs> Actually. Well, I, I, I just have <laughs> one more question for you, if I can. Okay. Uh, sure. You're doing uh, Irvine at the end of August. Um, yeah. I, I would like to go. And if I go, uh, can I get a picture with you? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Right. Find me. I'm, I'm always, after every single show, you know, I'm out front. uh I usually am selling CDs or something, or if I ran out of stuff to sell, I'm just thanking people for coming yeah. and uh, taking pictures. So I'll be there. Because you're one of my favorite comics, and you know, I, I know from a comic, it's kind of like weird to ask, you know. But like, no, man, please do that. I, I would love to say hi. That, that would be very, yeah, absolutely. We look forward let's, let's to seeing it. you. All right, thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate the Dan, interview, buddy. This was fantastic. Uh, what an education! What, so generous and so oh, thank true. You. Appreciate it. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, Alan. And, thank you. And thank you, Keith. And uh, you have a great week. You All too, right. my friend. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Again, nice. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Whoa! Wow, Dan Cummins, guys, that yes, was awesome. Indeed. That was fantastic. I don't know what it is that's happening, but our podcast seems to be the most amazing comedy school on the planet. These guys are too much. I didn't I didn't know what to do. He's teaching me so much as I'm listening to this. Yeah, I, I was I, I, I was I, like I, I was in shock by how much writing uh, techniques and how he thinks and then yeah, that was what awesome. happened on the show. My God. That was um, he's so funny too. He, and he's hilarious. I mean what, uh, what the something's like beeping on me. Bus here. Wait, are you beeping? I uh, there's a bus over here. It sounds like a, it's well, one of those conspiracy things. Wait, it's a. I'm so, I'm so confused here. What is this? Oh, it's a little buzz here. Can it's you, a can buzz. You hear, can you hear me? I hear a buzz. Do I hear? I don't know. I hear a kind of a tone. Oh, like a like a phone. It's the fan. There you go. Ah. That's go. that's a fan. I, I thought I thought it was one of those like conspiracies, history conspiracies, yeah. aliens. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, that's the show with Dan Cummings. Uh, you guys can follow him. Uh, subscribe to his podcast. Yes, it's called Time indeed. Suck. It's so funny. We listened to it. We loved it. And each episode, there's so many jokes and stuff. And Dan, I think you Dan has is learn a lot. Oh, Dan's the funniest guy. That's incredible. And uh, you could also follow Dan on. Uh, social media, uh, Twitter, Twitter, uh, Facebook. He's Dan Cumming Cummins at comedy Cummings yeah, comedy. In which, the Amazon, he has a um, the yes, bear, uh, the, the bear uh, on Amazon. He's got another. Uh, don't wake the bear. Don't That's wake, a stand up special. Don't wake the bear it's, special on Amazon. It's very funny. All right, guys. Uh, I'm Keith Razor, Alan Lee. Do you have? Uh, you told me not to ask you this, but do you have anything? You, you know wanna, what I have going for me is uh, I'm going to I'm going to go to the library tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to check out a book on uh, listening and, and, and writing podcasts. And I'm going to check that out tomorrow and spend the whole day reading it and writing notes. That's hack. Then, 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 yeah, that's a hack job. <laughs> you, know, was, you didn't even let me go with anywhere, and there was a whole deal I was going to do. And just like I was going to do like Dan, I was going to take it as far as it would go, you know, and say, yeah, I would go to the library. And then, you know, oh, well, see? <laughs> 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 we have a lot of fun here. Oh, yeah. This, it was awesome. Uh, Dan Cummins, thanks again, man. It, it was a great interview. We love you. I, I was so shocked by the Twitter handle of your names. Like, that I thought was just... I, I was amazed they were that long. Yeah. Like, just I, it happened to be this batch. Usually, yeah, it just I mean, depends. Well, usually I ignore the Twitter questions, but yeah. Yeah. They were. They, I liked the questions. Oh, no, the questions were good. Yeah. Just the names were like... Yeah, what are you going to do? Like, whatever happened to... Alan Lee. Or Dr. Heckle. Doctor, I, I can understand Dr. Heckle. That's yeah, kind of cool. simple. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, like, heck. but uh, Bachelor Fan 2002 XO, that makes no sense. Ba- are they, are they a because fan they, of the you, show? And no, then there's two kisses, a kiss and a hug, XO? He, well, XO means hugs and kisses, yes, so according to females. Yeah. But uh, Bachelor, so you're a, bach- you, so you're so a Bachelor saying. fan of the show. 
But if you're born in 2002, you're a little too young to be watching The Bachelor. Oh, a little weird. Right? A little weird. Well, these are Twitter. Twitter. You know, what are you going to do? What are yeah, you gonna well, do? It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. No. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, so, uh, and again, you know, are, we, we, should we thank our sponsor again? I'm yeah, we're definitely going to thank our sponsors again. But uh, before we do, uh, I think we should, uh, add us on uh, Facebook and please Twitter. Please do. Uh, iTunes. Please do. Uh, rate and sub- subscribe the show. Reza Riffs. Reza Riffs. R-E-Z-A space R-I-F-T-S. Rate and review us, guys. It's very important. You can like us on our, the Facebook, the fan page, like us. Yes. And we're also on Twitter yes. at Razor Riffs. At Razor Riffs. Uh, don't forget to follow Dan Cummins as well. And before we head out, we'd like to thank our sponsors again for helping us out with this episode and making this episode happen. Um, so we'll just thank them, and then we'll say good night, Alan Lee. Surely. And uh-huh. that's, uh, that's LGF, Museum of Natural History, right? Yes, Rifters, that is. It's... Uh, the LGF Museum of Natural History. So show them some love. If you go on to Facebook right now and like their like page at www.facebook.com dash LGF Foundation dash, or you could visit their website at www.lgffoundation.org. And together, if you donate some money to help build this museum, together we can build a museum of the future today. And we'll see you there, hopefully in the future. It's going to be a great, a great museum. I want to, I want to go. You I want saw. To, you want to make a make a, 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 a schedule a, a time we're going to go down to, to Phoenix. Why not? Yeah, we, we can I do love, that. I like Phoenix. I do. It's hot. <laughs> with this, with a, maybe we could find a snake mug for that guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's you know what? If you could find a snake mug, it would be Phoenix, a rattlesnake mug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't watch Craig Ferguson's show that much, but I didn't know a snake uh, mug was worth a know, Twitter he might, question. We, he might be one of our guests. Come to me, Craig Ferguson. Oh, you, you can't say that. You what never it? know. You never know. Shoot, <sighs> shoot, you know, shoot for the stars. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, Craig, uh, by the way, can you bring your snake mug? <laughs> That you know that'd be funny. That'd be one. That'd be like historical. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Like yeah. us on Facebook. Uh, rate and review us on iTunes. You got it. And also another shout out to our sponsors, um, the National History Museum (LGF). Uh, you could go onto their Facebook at www.facebook.com LGF Foundation or visit their website at www.lgffoundation.org and together if you donate we can build a museum of the future today i'm keith reza and see you guys next week and i'm alan lee the one and only the one and only you're listening to reza riffs with keith reza and alan lee right here on la talk radio